Hi everyone, I'm Tim Oliver and I'm going to talk to you today about my book review of Command and Control by Eric Schlosser, published in 2013 by Alan Lane. My book review was published in 2014 by International Affairs, which is the Journal of Chatham House, also known as the Royal Institute for International Affairs. You should be able to find a link below this video to my website where um, the review is published and through that, um, through that review you should also find a link to the book itself and also to the original review in International Affairs. Now the book and the review date from 2013 and 2014, but I thought I'd do this quick video summary because of developments surrounding North Korea, and I thought, well, this is a good time to go back to a review which I enjoyed writing because of the book, Command and Control, was one of the most brilliantly written books I've ever read, but also one of the most profoundly disturbing books which details nuclear war. And given what's going on in the Korean Peninsula at the moment, I thought it would be a good time to think about this book review and remind us of how nuclear weapons have not gone away. Because this is what really drove Schlosser to write this book. Eric Schlosser, who also wrote Fast Food Nation, some of you might remember him for that, he turned his attention to nuclear weapons because for many people in the West, in the United States, in the UK, in France, in Germany and elsewhere, nuclear weapons seem almost passe. They almost seem old school. They kind of, they're from the history books of the Cold War. They've fallen off our mental map to some extent. When in fact, Thousands of these machines, the most deadly machines mankind has ever created, remain on standby to launch at a moment's notice and inflict unimaginable levels of death and destruction. So they've not gone away. Even if we've stopped thinking about them in the same way or to the same extent that we did in the 1980s and 70s and so forth, they're still there. And Schlosser details in this book how many times during the Cold War the United States, and it's just focused on the United States, I'll come back to other countries in a moment, how many times during the Cold War the US nuclear arsenal was almost set off by accident, or at least parts of the US nuclear arsenal or single nuclear weapons were almost set off or kind of involved in significant accidents that could have seen the detonation of a nuclear warhead. And it's terrifying. Um, he tells of how between 1950 to 1968, there were an estimated 1,200 significant incidents involving nuclear weapons in accidents. And he tells the history chronologically. So he starts with the Manhattan Project, he works his way through the 50s and the kind of the gap that was imagined to be opening up between the Soviet Union and the United States, all the way through to the 1980s arms race between Reagan and the Soviet Union. And into this he weaves brilliantly the story of what happened at a missile man silo in Damascus, Arkansas in 1980, when, due to a simple mistake by a technician dropping, I think, a spanner or a sprocket or something down the Minuteman silo, puncturing the missile's side and therefore letting out all the fuel, um, he tells the story of how this had to be contained and how eventually the rocket blew up, blowing the, the entire Minuteman silo to pieces, killing one man, only one man, and blowing the nine megaton warhead, nine megatons, out of the silo and into a ditch several hundred feet away. Thankfully, all the safety features worked to the extent that the warhead didn't go off. You know, um, it still killed one man and blew a massive hole in the Arkansas countryside. Nevertheless, it didn't go off, but he tells the story of how this unfolded um, all the way through the book in, in a way that rivals any airport thrill. It really brings to life what this is about. Now, what, what terrifies you the most as you read through this book is not how many times nuclear weapons were kind of dropped by accident, how many times they broke, how many times they nearly went off for it, not for the most basic of safety switches, how many times they were accidentally launched, they were smashed, they were dropped, they were crushed in lifts, they were subject to intense fires, how many times nuclear weapons have crashed um, because the planes they were on have crashed, how many times they were flown armed when the pilots didn't know that the weapons were armed, how many times early warning systems nearly triggered the entire system. What worries you is not that, to some extent. I mean, by the time you've got through the book, you're almost tired of reading of another incident. What terrifies you the most, and almost, I think, terrifies Schlosser the most, is how many times these incidents were covered up by the base commanders, by the technicians, by the people further down the chain of command, because they're human beings and they didn't want to admit mistakes because it would ruin their careers. And then what's really terrifying is how many times these incidents were hidden or uh, or kind of or kind of kept away from the people whose job it was to investigate accidents and learn from the near from the mistakes and the, and the accidents in order to improve the safety systems that's what terrifies the most the number of times things happened but there was no way in which people could learn about them 
But this isn't just a book which catalogues these incidents and tells of what happened in them. It also is about the wider system in terms of the command and the control that was built up to try and command and control the nuclear weapons system, obviously. Um, and those of you who are familiar with nuclear weapons and nuclear war theory and so forth will find much in the book that's very familiar, such as the details about PSYOP, which was the single integrated operations plan, which was the US plan of how to fight a nuclear war, the most terrifying book ever written, um, all the way through to things like the always never dilemma for nuclear weapons. There's lots in there that's very familiar. References and footnotes run to in a very impressive 122 pages. Schlosser has done his homework here. It's brilliant archival work, brilliant interviews. It really does read like a book that's been incredibly well researched. And he also tells the story of the people involved, whether the kind of the highest ranking generals and, uh, and kind of ministers and so forth, all the way down to your average man in the missile silo. Because often it came down to the lowest of the low in the US Air Force, the technicians, the kind of the missile men and so forth, who were the lowest of the low in the US Air Force. If you joined the US Air Force, you wanted to fly a fighter jet. You wanted to work on a fighter jet. You wanted to do something exciting. You didn't want to sit several hundred feet underground in a missile silo in you know, one of the Dakotas. That's not really what you might join the US Air Force for. So often these men were overlooked. Often they made mistakes. Often they were also the men who had to face those mistakes, face the accidents and contain them. And if it weren't for them and if it weren't for their bravery that was often overlooked, we'd have seen probably some very, very horrific accidents. So he paints some brilliant pen portraits and tells wonderful stories about the, the, what these men um, often went through. But he also looks at the kind of the higher people, people like Curtis LeMay of the US Air Force or Robert McNamara, the Defence Secretary, and he has a bit of a love-hate relationship for these individuals because he loves them for the discipline, the strictness and the order he, that they tried to bring to the nuclear weapon systems that they were building up. But at the same time, he's never oblivious to the monsters that they were building, and he hates them for this, but he respects them for the discipline they tried to bring to these systems in order to make sure that they were always going to be safe and never go off. Now, his aim in the book is not just to catalogue these things, nor is it just to compare what's happened in the United States to what happens elsewhere. By the time you get to that bit of the book where he starts to discuss this, you're under no illusions that if this is what's happened in the United States, then an even more terrifying book is due to be written about what's happened elsewhere in the world, whether it's in the Soviet Union or China or Britain, France, Pakistan, India, Israel, or maybe even now what's happening in, happening in North Korea. His aim is to make it clear that these complex systems are always going to see accidents. There are always going to be accidents. It's almost inevitable in any incredibly complex system, especially one surrounding a nuclear weapon system. So if we're going to have these things, then we shouldn't lose sight of them. We shouldn't let them fall off our mental map. We should keep them closely scrutinised, especially in the democratic world. Our democratic institutions should always have oversight of these things. And therefore, just at the end, I found on page 499, in the final sentences of the notes on sources, I found for me what I think sums up what Eric Schlosser set out to do in this book, and which I think it does brilliantly. And I'll quote. Page 499, he says, The suppression of the truth has allowed a small and elite group of policymakers to wield tremendous, largely unchecked power. There are few issues more important than what nuclear weapons can do, where they are aimed and, wh and why they might be used and who has the ability to order their use. I hope my book contributes in some small way to restoring a semblance of democracy to the command and control of the deadliest, most dangerous machines that mankind has ever invented. Well, Amen to that. You can read the full review through the link below, and I hope you enjoy the review. I hope you enjoy the book. I recommend you buy it. You should still be able to find it in most bookstores. It's still a bestseller. I gave it as a Christmas present to lots of friends a few years ago. They thought I was slightly weird for doing that, but those who read it agreed with me that it was one of the most profoundly disturbing but brilliantly written books that you will ever read. So thanks very much for listening to this video review, and I hope you enjoy Command and Control by Eric Schlosser.